All right, everyone, welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Going to be touching on the top plays in week 12 on DraftKings today. Let's go ahead and get into it. So coming in off of a pretty good Thanksgiving slate, I don't know if people in the comment section were trolling or not, uh, kind of saying that I was being biased towards the Packers or favoring the Packers too much. I mean, it pays to watch film. Uh, let's just put it that way. Um, continue to be correct on the Packers. Hopefully, you guys have been taking advantage of that. Uh, Jordan Love had himself a good game, as expected. Um, you know, the cheapest quarterback play on the slate kind of an easy play and then if you paid up for Dak you had yourself a pretty good week I would assume now looking at this slate I don't know if we have that many good quarterback plays I mean don't get me wrong we got Josh Allen in a great spot going against Philly I just got done doing my props video though he was actually his I think his prop scores like 21.5 and the data was actually favoring the under there so that's a little bit of a concern to me yeah Chris Stroud in seemingly a pretty good spot going against Jacksonville he's been extremely consistent as well I'd be fine betting his over or sorry I'd be fine uh, for him as a play and I'd also be fine for like Trevor Lawrence to be a play as well to me those are all kind of GPP plays I don't know how safe they are especially Trevor Lawrence where on a week-to-week -week basis you can't really bank on him having a good week like he is too inconsistent to trust I think because of that though he's always a decent GPP play and so I'm fine with that is priced up a little bit too much to me the one quarterback play that I really want to be going out of my way to play is probably going to be Kyler Murray because I do feel like he is a super safe play he's going against that Rams defense that isn't terrible but isn't great uh I think we're going to see that rushing upside be there for him now can we bank on a rushing touchdown probably not but at the same time uh the safety has been there for him okay and he hasn't really been able to get Marquise Brown going and I think eventually he will be able to do that as well so I think he's gonna be a fine play if you're not playing Kyler Murray though you're probably gonna play a chalky James Conner and I'll touch on that in a second but after that guys to me it just gets too risky like Derek Carr I think I'm fine with against the Falcons like I think he'll have a fine game I'm not expecting much but like 15 or so I think I think that's what we can expect from him now he's going to be without Michael Thomas and I'll touch on some value plays at the receiver spot. I'm not too worried about that. I do think Will Levis actually has an okay chance to have a good game simply because Carolina Panthers should be able to establish the run. And you look at the one game that he's had that's been like a really good game. It was against the Atlanta Falcons. And what was the correlation there? They were able to really establish the run and thus they're able to hit on the play action plays. So I do think he could be in for a better game. But to me, every other spot that we're getting probably just a little bit too thin. Like the only other play that I'd probably want to go in on in some capacity given the price tag is Desmond Ritter and heck if you guys want to just punt to him and then really pay it for studs I don't hate that like it's kind of an ugly slate for quarterback plays like to me this is the most wide open it's been this whole season we don't have any clear-cut value. We don't have any clear-cut payout plays. And I said it because I think we're going to want to pay out uh, for receiver on this slate. So if you just want to completely punt and go with Ritter, not a terrible spot against the Saints, but not like a spot you would be attacking. Taylor Heineke looked terrible. We know that Desmond Ritter is someone that can rush the football. Hopefully, if you're playing him, that's what you're hoping to. And so real quickly, I do just want to show you guys the projected ownership at the quarterback position. And yeah, so just taking a peek at kind of the ownership at the quarterback spot, we're going to see Jalen Hurts is pulling in the most ownership. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah, has he been the safest? Sure. Has Buffalo been struggling lately? Are they, are they going to be without their DBs? Yes, that all makes sense. But I don't know. I would rather, I think, get to Kyler Murray at a much lower ownership. I think he's just as safe. I'd rather get there over Trevor Lawrence. Now we are seeing people are probably going a little bit more risk reward at the quarterback position this week, which I, you know, I'm kind of fine. It does make sense. So um you know not terrible I will say if Tommy DeVito has a good game I wouldn't be shocked as well but again he's a little bit too high priced I think I'd rather go with Desmond Ritter than <laughs> ugly to say right he is pulling in a little bit of ownership but let's go ahead and get into the running backs and I want to actually start with the uh, ownership I am kind of fascinated with the ownership here so we got Jonathan Taylor pulling in as extreme chalk, then Isaiah Pacheco, then Rashad White, then James Conner, then Javante Williams, then Stevenson, then Bajan Robinson. And so I'm bringing this up because to me, I don't really see any of those guys as starting points. Uh, for me, I'll show you guys what I saw as starting points. And this is where it's kind of unfortunate with NFL. It's like you probably should just see the chalk. To me, I think Saquon Barkley is the starting point. Uh, we just saw him be heavily involved in the last game. He is the biggest mover, I think, in terms of production in the NFL. Like, you take him off the Giants offense, they're one of the worst teams in the league. Put him on the Giants, somewhat healthy, they're a 500 team. It's it's kind of just weird. Um, now, yes, they're going against Washington. I get that. But New England hasn't been that much better. So I do think, one, he's a safe play. But I also think we should be getting a good game out of him. Now, do we have to take that risk? Probably not. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, I do worry about. I don't exactly get why he's pulling in that much ownership going against the Bucs. Um, that does concern me. I think that's a fade. And guys, I'm a huge Jonathan Taylor fan. Um, probably a little bit concerning to fade him. But at the same time, I think it's the correct move. Now, I do get why Pacheco's pulling in chalk going against the Las Vegas Raiders. That is seemingly going to be a good matchup. I'm fine kind of eating that chalk. James Conner is at such a cheap price take for a guy that's going to be heavily involved for a guy that's going to get around 17 hours 
opportunities. Again, I get that. That makes sense. I'd rather go Kyler Murray. And so I'm not playing James Conner at a pretty cheap price tag. We are going to see Stevenson pulling in a lot of chalk guys. His production over the last couple of weeks has been encouraging. Don't get me wrong. And I do kind of expect it to continue. But you look at Washington. That was one big play against Indy. That was just an ugly game. And could this be an ugly game again? Yes. But if people are playing Stevenson at that ownership, they should also be playing Saquon Barkley at an increased ownership. So to me, that's a big edge that we could get on Saquon. Now, granted, it is a little bit of risk reward. And I do think uh, Stevenson is kind of just a play we should be in the chalk on. I didn't start my week out with that. So I'm a little bit surprised I'm getting there now. I will say Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt not getting chalked in this awesome matchup against Denver, a little bit fascinating to me. Now, are they guaranteed to have a good game? No, but I don't really see any plays this week that are guaranteed to have a good game. You got Jalen Warren, hopefully in a good spot. If he can get more work, that's not a terrible spot. But yeah, to me, it's fascinating. And then we also look at Kyron Williams, like not pulling in too much ownership. And I think he's just going to be easily inserted into that RB1 role again. Now, maybe they're a little bit cautious with him, but I think they were cautious with him by putting him on the IR. So all reports that I've seen say that he's good to go. So I'm perfectly fine just playing him there. And I think we're getting some good leverage. Now, do you want to play Saquon Barkley? You can. I'm perfectly fine with that. But again, like I'm just fascinated by the ownerships that we are getting here. Like Kyron Williams only getting 6.5% ownership. That's strange to me. Uh, Jerome Ford not getting that much ownership. That's strange to me. And we look at Saquon, only 11% owned. So, you know, we are seemingly getting some decent edges ownership wise. Now, White, I'm fine playing. Like he should have a fine game. Uh, Pacheco, like I'm fine. Like I think their projections are probably correct for them. And where I'm probably bumping some projections is going to be someone like Saquon Barkley, where I'm probably putting it at 18. So I can ensure that I'm going to get more of him. And then same thing with Kyron Williams. Like I'm probably putting him at 17 data wise so that I'm telling the data I want to be on those players. Now, I do want to mention one more player as a GPP play. I think it's a very solid GPP play. And I might do something like this, like 18 for Derrick Henry and cap it at 15 or so. And this is something I really want to bank on in cash. Heck no, but does it make for a great GPP play? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, really solid match. The last two weeks against Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, you weren't thinking about playing him. At least you shouldn't have been. Tough matchups, no shock that he struggled. Now he gets a really good matchup in a matchup that we probably can project and get around 20 opportunities in. Man, he should be able to crush. And I think he has a good chance to score a touchdown in this game. 20 fantasy points is now the realm of possibilities. And it's at his ownership. That's something I want to be getting in, in on. Now we go ahead and take a peek at the receiver spot. Again, um, this is probably where I'm going in on the most. We have a ton of value. And so for me, I'm kind of just blindly trusting Diggs to have a good game against Philly. I think that's just the route I want to go. Now, it is concerning given the fact that the last two games that has not occurred. Uh, but it's just such a strong matchup. If you're not playing him, you're probably playing Khalil Shakir. I think that's just the move. And I actually do like Jamar Chase as well. I do think he's going to get targeted heavily. Obviously, having Jake Browning at the quarterback is a little bit of a concern. If you don't want to play him, I get it. I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, to me, I don't know if we need to mess around with any players up here. Like, they're all fine. I'm all okay with them. The player I like the most is actually going to be Michael Pittman Jr. We have seen the Buccaneers have struggled, and we have seen Michael Pittman Jr. be extremely consistent as a fantasy producer. To me, I'd rather be on him than I would uh, Jonathan Taylor at you know, somewhat similar price tags. And so for me, he's kind of the mid-tier play I've been playing. And then we go on and just get into the values, guys. Starting with Deontay Johnson, I think he's going to be fine in this game. He's going to get force-fed targets, I think. We're going to see him probably get around 10 in this game. Uh, my guy, Demario Douglas, in a smash spot going against the Giants. And by smash spot, I mean just a solid 2x play. I think he's a super safe cash play, someone that I certainly want to be going on my way to play. Uh, the question is, do we need to do that? Because we are going to have better value, I think. You got Tyler Boyd in a good spot. Tyler Boyd, if you're playing Jamar Chase, you're probably playing Tyler Boyd, um, very cheap price tag on him. He should be involved. We got Shakir in a, in a pretty good spot. Again, like if if you don't want to play Diggs, I get it. Play Shakir, Shakir. He's been a stud. He really has been for really three out of his past four games. Probably want a little bit more targets, but for him having a massive game, it wouldn't be too shocking. We saw Greg Dortch actually have a good game, and it was pretty funny. Last week, I told you guys uh, Wicks for the Green Bay Packers was going to be a great pivot off of a chalky Rondell Moore, which was a great call. Um, and it's funny, like Moore ended up working out. He had one catch for a touchdown, but no, it was actually Greg Dortch, which was the player that was heavily involved. And we saw us at the beginning of the season last year, Kyler Murray was actually targeting Greg Dortch pretty heavily while DeAndre Hopkins was out. And so we've kind of seen them to fall a little bit back into that. So Greg Dortch is at an extremely cheap price tag, a price tag that I find very appealing. We also have A.T. Perry down here, guys. A.T. Perry looked like a freaking Michael Thomas clone in his last game against Minnesota. This season's Michael Thomas, sorry. Um, and so it won't be surprising to see him have a good game. He actually played the most snaps out of any receiver in the last game. Now, I don't know if that's because they're playing from behind. It very well could be. A lot of people are going to be flocking to Rashid Shahid, and they probably should be. I think he's a great spot as well. 
probably someone you can play in cash. Although I don't know if his role is going to change too much. I think A.T. Perry's, you know, a guy that they loved in the preseason. And we've seen a lot of these guys that had good preseasons come on. Jake Bobo, uh, Puka Nakua, Tank Dell, Demario Douglas. He's he's kind of just the next extension of that. Uh, and so I don't mind him as a play. But then we get into another play like Justin Watson, who's casually become the Chiefs receiver number one. And at the min price to begin Justin Watson, that to me is just fascinating. I don't see how I'm not playing him. Uh, 11 targets in that last game, a touchdown, uh, just playing a lot of snaps. Now, maybe they look at that and say, we were probably wrong to give him that much. I don't think so. Like throughout the la last season and a half, I've kind of thought he was their best receiver, which is pretty unfortunate for them. Now, a lot of people are going to cite the drops that he had. I kind of just blame that on the rain. Those are tough catches. They just are. And especially when you got Mahomes flailing them in there at you. So I don't know. All in all though, to get him at 3K, that, that seems to be a great price tag for me. And so I'm perfectly fine playing him. I am very curious. I haven't actually taken a peek at the ownership. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so Michael Pittman Jr. is pulling in as pretty chalk, as he should be. That makes sense. A.J. Brown, then Tank Dell, still pretty chalky. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like he's a little bit too high priced. I, I think I'd probably rather get to Nico Collins, but at the same time, the only way I'm probably getting to those guys is in a game stack. Uh, we are seeing Demario Douglas pulling in some chalk. Probably correct. I think he's a very strong play. Justin Watson is pulling in some chalk. I'm fine with that. But we're not seeing like A2 Perry. We're not seeing Rashid Shahid pulling in as chalk. I'm, I'm good with that. And we're not seeing Greg George pulling in as chalk as well. So, you know, again, like this is a weird slate where i don't know if the ownerships are all that great uh last week i was pretty much saying receiver wise i'm just gonna eat the chalk and i'm just getting on tank dell because of that I ended up working out i don't know if we need to do that like, I, I just the chalk is just weird this week and then real quickly tight end wise dalton kincaid i do worry about this guys um I just got done doing my props video. He was actually someone that was expected to struggle today, especially when you look at the projection. He was actually projected to get under that. So maybe there's something there. I don't know. Uh, I thought Trey McBride would just be the gung-ho chalk. I kind of like him as price tag, and I kind of like the fact that he's not coming in too I owned. I just think he's going to be heavily targeted. And if I'm playing Kyler Murray, I probably want to be getting to Trey McBride. So I think he's going to be a good play. And then another player I'm surprised is not pulling in chalk is actually Tanner Hudson. Now, it's not the best matchup. And, you know, we're not expecting crazy stuff from him. This is kind of just a punt at the tight end play to allow you to pay up for the studs on the slate. And so I'm okay with that. Tanner Hudson, we're good. So we have a lot of salary to kind of work with here. If you're trying to close out your build, again, I think Kyler Murray is the play I want to go in on the most. And you have 5K left over for a defense. I don't really care which defense you guys are playing. Like, I think they're all viable options. Um, you know, maybe. Maybe KCD I'm fine with in their matchup. Patriots D in their matchup I'm fine with. Like if you're not playing Saquon, you're probably playing them. I think you can honestly probably play both of them. Uh, Broncos I'm fine with. We have seen the Houston defense still be productive in the last few games. And you get the Jacksonville offense that is extremely seemingly inconsistent like i'm still fine paying down at them so it's a weird slate it's a weird slate like you could easily upgrade to jalen hurts i think i'd be fine with that on the slate given how banged up buffalo is to give you guys kind of a first look build i think you could just easily upgrade to trey mcbride there then you're fine like this is seemingly a pretty good cash build i would say maybe you don't want to play justin watson maybe you want to play greg dorch i get it that i'm perfectly fine with that if you want to play at perry i'm perfectly fine with that khalil shakir i'm perfectly fine with that like we have so many good options to pivot to on the slate it's fascinating really it is uh, again though i do think saquon barkley probably one of the better leverage spots that we're getting on this slate that's gonna be all for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel again sorry for the late post hopefully next week i can start to post at a more timely fashion all right thanks guys have a good week good luck and as always let's keep cashing